So ever since I saw this little Flywoo 4 inch come out and I got into the DJI FPV system, it really has drawn my attention. And obviously it's drawn a lot of your attention because it's pretty hard to get a hold of one of these. Even Joshua Bardwell did a video on one of these, uh, one of the nicest videos that I've seen him do in quite some time, honestly. But we're here to talk about me and my experience, so let's get to it right now. Welcome back to the Dorky and 40 channel. I am Chad. So let's talk about the Flywoo 4 inch. Now that it's the middle of October and I finally got a hold of one, mine is the non Vista regular version, 150 bucks, and you add your own Vista HD system and everything like that into it. Still comes with the buzzer and the GPS all ready to go. The wiring and stuff's a little weird. We'll show you that. So everything that applies from the past applies to now. So to cut to the chase, there's really nothing that this does that my four inch four ride by Kebab FPV can't do. The, if I don't run with a GoPro or nothing, so I can put a equivalent sized battery on the four ride and get almost as long as a flight. I'm running a 3S 1100 on that and getting about seven to eight minutes. Great cruising, tunes a lot better, everything else. I'll put a link up here if you wanna check out that and there will be more coming on that quad as well. So I will definitely say that I'm not gonna give you the big hyped version of this, you know, it's a nice little bird, but it definitely has a lot of problems. The 16 by 16 stack kind of stinks. I don't really have a lot of the OSD issues. My OSD flickers maybe on or off once or twice with a long flight. Maybe that has to do with the very first thing I did with this was switch out this GPS to the TBS one, which is a U-Blocks GPS that everybody uses. The original one is one of the NEMEA or NEMA or whatever. And you know, people complain about getting a lock in like 10 to 12 minutes. I get a lock and I get tons of satellites in like a minute with this little TBS GPS. It's a direct plug-in, so you can pick one up for like 10 bucks and literally just pull this one out, plug it in and you're good to go so that's definitely one mod you'll want to do to this the next thing is of course going to be the tune and this is going to be kind of hard to kind of work out because this thing inherently is going to have some weird uh wobbly stability issues i think with the lower kv motors the by blades and everything like that it's got a lot of things like going against it when it comes to getting a good rock solid tune so it's very affected by like wind and everything like that so you are going to get a little bit of wobble in your video you'll see that when we go through and i'll show you everything but it's nothing super crazy I'm still running the regular 4.2 uh, beta flight that came on mine. I have not reverted back to the 4.1.1 because the OSD thing hasn't been that big of a deal for me. Some people says that there goes out all the time. Like I said, mine has not. So I've added the Vista in here and everything like that. We'll take a look at the wiring. It's kind of weird if you want to wire this up and stuff. Uh, plus you can see right there that I am actually using uh, the DJI FPV remote. I picked that up to kind of give it a try just to see like how big of a difference it is. We'll talk more about that in another video, but if you're running Crossfire Tango 2 and you're happy with what you got, I probably skipped the DJI remote. Honestly, at this point, I kind of regret the purchase. So if we take a look at the wiring here, this is how you get the actual ship. You can see the GPS hanging out there at the back. Um, and how I replaced that. That's the original one right there. Replaced that with the TBS unit. Again, it's a direct plug-in. Pull the antenna out, and right there's where your Vista goes. So everything GPS and buzzer-wise is pre-wired. So you're gonna get two harnesses that are gonna be sticking out of this. And at first glance, you would think that you would need to actually use one for your receiver and one for the Vista, but actually you're gonna need to use certain wires from each individual one. So you're gonna be left over with a couple wires that you can either desolder or get rid of. I just got rid of mine, but if you wanna use Crossfire or something, you're gonna need those extra power and grounds. 
And you're definitely going to want to pay attention to which ones you are moving around. I would recommend pulling up the actual pinout of the flight stack from like a manufacturer's website. That way you know for sure where everything is going to like UART1, UART2, and then the soft serial hookup for the GPS. So I put the stability arms on mine just for the heck of it. Don't really know if it makes that big of a difference, but you know, there's still a little bit of flex in there. You know, these are only three millimeter thick arms and the main plate and stuff like that. So the, everything being soft mounted and it being light and everything, we shouldn't be getting a whole lot of wobble in our tune, but for some reason we are. I think it's just something that we have to deal with. Uh, again, the lower KV of the motor, I think you're definitely gonna run this on 4S, so that way it has a little bit more authority in the air. Uh, we'll take a look at this here in the, in the video here and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Uh, the other thing too is this antenna, you'll definitely wanna like glue it in there somehow. I use some uh, shoe goo to kind of keep it in there because this thing will come in and out like during flight and it came back to me a couple times, like kind of laid over like that which obviously isn't good for something that's like meant to be a long range cruiser. So you don't want that happening. Uh, besides that, any other modifications? Um, that's pretty much all I've done. Uh, the frame itself, I really like the build quality and stuff. I probably will rip off this, uh, you know, padding and stuff and put some Uma grip on there just because I just don't like my batteries sliding around and they can really affect the tune on a small vehicle like this. The metal side plates for the camera are a super nice touch. So you can have that all locked in there really good. The build of it, despite these being maybe rushed or hurried or whatever, uh, was just fine. Every screw was really tight. I think I ended up tightening up the actual, the, the one screw there that goes into like the TPU mounts, just like a little bit more on each motor. So everything was uh, good when it came to that. I was pretty uh, happy with all of that. So finally, let's take a look at some footage and uh, we'll flash up my PIDs and talk about that. So this is literally my first maiden flight here and I was actually flying with a lithium ion 4S uh, pack that I used to use on my recruit wing. And it's, you know, one of the, it's, a, it's one of the biggest ones that you can get and it's a high uh, discharge one. So that way you can go ahead and use it on like quads and like uh, kind of fast wings. I think it's like 30, 35 amps uh, all together. Just kind of trying to get a feel for everything. Plus I was uh, using the DJI remote control and all that kind of stuff. So this is just goggle DVR, nothing super crazy. But the thing that's great about DJI, of course, is you can just pretty much just go for it and just do whatever the heck you want to do. You get all the nice breakup and, and uh, stuff with uh, the, oh gosh, whatever it's called. You know how it breaks up on the edges and not in the middle. But you, it's great. I mean, you can see just how I'm flying, uh, just totally built houses and all that kind of stuff. And... Just kind of going up in the air, getting a cruise for thing. And one thing about like DJI products in general with the FPV is that you kind of find yourself just doing things that you normally wouldn't do because you couldn't do them. Like, you know, check out these birds and stuff. Um, you know, you can't do that and see that kind of stuff on analog. You could see some uh, extra break up there. So it was a little windy out here. This is the stock tune. Wasn't too bad actually now that I've been looking back at it. I did kind of do another tune after this and then I went back to the stock and made just some different modifications on everything and I'll flash those up here right now. Then we'll show you some more flight footage of something that's a little bit more, oh, I don't know, faster or fun or something like that. So here we go, we're out flying out in the front of my house here, and you could see that with like a little bit of wind on a different conditions that, uh, you know, we're definitely getting some wobbling and bobbling, and I'll continue to work on that. Don't really think like RPM filtering or anything is gonna get rid of that stuff again. I think it's just kinda 
the inherent design. And since I have started flying on 4S 850 batteries that I got, I know that's the battery that I'm gonna tune for now. I'm not gonna worry about the whole lithium ion tune. So it does feel good and there's definitely a lot less wobble and there's like weird, not any of the weird things that you would get when you would do some hard cornering or anything. But again, this thing is just kind of like, it's like a little niche product. You're just gonna have it to like kind of fly around and do whatever. And I mean, you know, even at 150 or 300 for the Vista version, I've said it before in some of my other videos, you just can't go wrong with these bind and fly DJI aircraft. They're just such a sweet deal, considering that you're getting your frame, everything built, wired up, GPS, ready to go for a hundred bucks. All you gotta do is just drop a Vista unit in there. So that is a pretty good deal. Now that I have the remote, I don't even have to worry about adding or buying another Crossfire. So that was kind of my decision for that. But since I only have like three or four ships now, um, I just don't uh, think it's really even necessary because I'm never, I don't know if I'm ever gonna make that cost savings back. But we'll talk about that, as I said, in another video. So I'll just kind of let this footage play out for you guys. If you want to take a look at the rest of it, a few minutes left. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Subscribe, comment. Let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. We will talk to you guys later.